Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN Weekly for Saturday, October 14th, 2023. And our top story today, well, is it too early? We're going to discuss the stock market outlook for 2024. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Jane King is a financial journalist joining us from the NASDAQ. Jane, always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Great to be here, Jeffrey. Yeah, uh, let's talk about inflation because uh, recent report, consumer prices climbed at a, at, at a 3.7% annual pace in September. I want to get your reaction and then, of course, the market's reaction. Well, that was a little bit more than what we thought. And, and by the way, that 3.7% is on top of the bigger gains that we saw last year. So when you compare to, say, 2019, we're paying like I don't know, 12, 13% more for a lot of things, in some cases more than that. So this inflation is building upon itself. Um, but the market was, it was interesting. We had a kind of a delayed reaction. So as soon as the number came out, the market was kind of like, eh, no biggie. But then they started to see interest rates go up because it, it does look like we're going to have to uh, have these interest rates get a little bit higher to tackle this inflation that's been really sticky and stubborn. And so the markets then turn lower and it's become a concern again. Yeah, it's, it's certainly a conundrum. And I would I'd give anything to be a fly on the wall in that uh, FOMC meeting, or at least some of the conversations when they're talking about how to weigh a rate increase versus status quo. Jane, I know it's a little early. We're, we're only in October. It's midway through October. But analysts are expecting the bull market to continue in 2024 this inflation, some of the reaction of the market. I want to get what you're hearing from your your guests, analysts, et cetera. You talk to a lot more people than we do. I actually, I feel like what I've been hearing more of lately is slowdown um, later this year and into early next year. So I think that's why where the Fed is is so precarious right now, because we've got inflation. Clearly, it's not going away, um, which would you know typically mean raise interest rates. But if they do that too much, that will slow things down even more. They don't want to overshoot their mark. So it's going to really be a tough needle to thread here. But there are some signs. There's some signs that we're hearing from the banks that there's some financial stress among consumers, things like that. Um, so there's some signs that things are slowing down. Labor market's still pretty strong, but um, there is a lot of talk about a slowdown or perhaps even a recession at some point over the next six months. And Jane, the international events continue. Uh, we're not going to talk politics on the program, but a major event happening um, in the Middle East over the weekend in Israel. Uh, let's talk about oil real quick, because you talk about inflation, you talk about gas prices. Um, do these type of events still have the same impact on the price of oil that they once did? You think about the 1970s into the 1980s and the 1990s. Something happened in the Middle East where a lot of the oil came from that would send shockwaves through the uh, oil market. Is it still the case? Well, we did see oil go up Sunday night. So that was the first time it got a chance to react to the events in Israel over the weekend. And then it kind of backed down a little bit as the, it really went up when we started to see reports at Iran. Um, was behind this, the Wall Street Journal in particular. And, um, but then as those it kind of settled down and, um, but now we're back up again, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is at the lowest it's been since the mid eighties. Um, and then also there were some curbs put on Russian oil output this morning. Uh, so that has uh, had an impact on oil as well. Um, we've got our own oil. We just, you know, they are not drilling it. Um, due to various permitting and environmental issues going on right now with this administration, but um, it's there and we can tap it if we have to. Um, it'll take some time, but I would say oil doesn't react like it did in the 70s, but it did have a reaction this week. Yeah, it, look, I, you can't go, unfortunately, you can't go a week with some, you know, we, we talked a lot about Ukraine and Russia this year with you and the impact of the markets. There are always international events and global events, unfortunately. This is another one that we're going to have to see how it all plays out. Jane King, always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to having you back on the program again next week. Thanks, Jane. Great to see you. Thanks for sharing your perspective. And we come back, we'll take a look at some of our best segments for the week. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, 
healthier and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. Well, it was another great week of shows, great topics, of course, great guests. We kicked off the week with a look at how small business owners are feeling fulfilled, but there are some challenges ahead. Let's take a look. I, I love that. And you know what? My favorite answer, it, 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 it's always shocking. You can hear all the turmoil, all the news, all the hubbubble, and all the thing it's going to come down to is that we've got really optimistic and really resilient feeling um, small businesses. And I think that uh, heartstring is what's being tugged the strongest right now. You know, this is also, you know, we recently just conducted this survey and our survey came back with, you know, nine out of 10 of our small businesses business owners are feeling successful and you think okay well what makes success and i think what you know kind of going to the heart of things is driving back towards a business owner's purpose why did they start the business what motivated them to make that transition and i think it does go back to some that core idea of what am i passionate about you know what do i love out of this life and what imprint and am i going to make on my communities on my family what is my legacy going to look like and so i think what's really powerful about you know you said kind of the lifeblood of our economy um it's that you know small business owners are dreamers that are actually taking that dream and then putting it into action so Despite when things are hard, whether there's inflation, whether there's a pandemic and a shutdown, you're finding these small business owners being incredibly resilient, incredibly resourceful, leveraging their communities and one another to say, you know what, I'm staying true and dedicated to my purpose. And then and I think that's what's, you know, continuing to like fan the flame, so to speak, and really seeing our small business owners continue to adapt and evolve. So, you know, one of the pivots that I had the pleasure to witness with U.S. Bank was moving from calling uh, our team bankers, and we now call them client relationship consultants. And we even have small business specialists, um, because to your point, folks are not necessarily needing a banker. They need a support system. They need a friend. They need an advisor. And I think that's when you start to think about how does my bank play into my relationship? and you know, again, when you think about how a small business owner has so much coming at them every single day, whether it's all the different digital resources that are now, you know, amplifying the noise, um, they know they need to figure out how can I grow? How can I take the thing that I'm most passionate about and actually see it, you know, come to fruition? And you're absolutely right. So access to capital is probably the number one. Um, and that comes in a lot of different forms. So whether it's through U U.S. Bank, and we do have an incredible diversity lending program that helps our women, minority owners, and veteran-owned um, businesses gain access to capital um, in new ways. So that's been a really powerful program. We also have in place in our markets um, a key team of folks that we call access advisors that are really serving the underserved and the underprivileged to make sure, like from financial literacy, um, and understanding, again, if it's not your bank that's going to provide the resource, 
we have amazing community resources and CDFIs and, you know, just, you know, your chambers. There's so many, uh, you know, and that's what I think I loved even about, I have to talk about the pandemic because it's still, you know, while, while we're three years post, it's still, it's now part of our DNA and it did help us to evolve and think about how we work together instead of a silo. Because I do think, you know, honestly, Jeff, you know, being a small business owner can be lonely. And even some of our survey actually said, gosh, while I'm feeling successful, I'm also feeling incredibly stressed. Um, maybe I'm even missing out on important things like birthdays or anniversaries or, you know, I have to skip yeah. somewhere in order to be more successful. And that's where I think what we learned through the pandemic is that you're not alone. It's amazing even if you're feeling like on an island by leveraging your community, leveraging your resources, partnering with your bank as an advisor, that's where you start to see the momentum and you suddenly learn that you don't have, you can be passionate about the thing you're passionate about, but let the other folks that have the expertise in these areas bring those resources to you to help educate you and get you what you need. And we also discussed how older Americans are facing rising debt and of course, the implications of that. Let's take a look. So uh, what we find is that the share of older Americans um, in retirement with debt has definitely grown a lot in the past decade. So we were looking into the period in the late 80s to recently 2019, and we found that the share has grown significantly from less than 40% to now over 60%. So we do find a lot of older Americans in retirement end up with debt, and that may be very burdensome since they're living on retirement income. So older households have to juggle a number of different expenses um, on retirement income. So they having debt will definitely add to um, the amount of, um, sorry, <laughs> having debt will definitely add to the amount of um, financial decisions that, that they're already having to make. So um, older households in retirement actually hold a number of different types of debt that we have found. Um, so households typically have a mortgage debt. That is the, the biggest part of the type of debt that households have. But also um, credit card is definitely rising and that might be a bigger problem since they usually are associated with higher interest rates. So you have to pay a lot of costs if you're carrying credit card debt. Um, we also looked into medical debt and student loans and these potentially are all types of debt that could put households in financial trouble. Our research, however, did not look into the potential implications on the heirs um, of these older Americans. So is that that is outside the scope of our study, unfortunately. But yeah. future research may shed some light on that for sure. And that wraps up this episode of BRN Weekly. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, then visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRN Sunday. I'll be joined by the Legal Eagles, David Levine and Kevin Walsh, and then the Schwab Network's Oliver Rennick. You're not going on to miss that show. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts, so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.